All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's time for another Student of the Gun Radio. Today's title is a question. A perfect Texas hog rifle? I'm Ron Burgundy. Who put the question on the tele- question mark on the teleprompter? No, it's there on purpose. It's there on purpose. We're going to talk about that. Uh, because, well, it's always, here's like, is it hunting season in Texas? It's always hunting season in Texas. That's the great thing about Texas is it's always hunting season. Uh, we've got a little bit of, we're going to have some Brown Hills bullet points, talk about some hardware. We're going to talk about some software. We've got a student of the gun homeroom for you. And uh, then we're talking about cleaning guns, maybe a little bit. But all of that today on Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping owner, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pin Hand of America, Professor Paul Martin. All right, podbean.com. Yeah, that's right. If you're out there on podbean.com, hello. Hello. How about Raphonic? How about you? All you guys out there in, on Raphonic. Yeah, that's a thing. Speaking of things, did you guys see that uh, that they scrapped Stitcher? Yeah. Oh, Stitcher. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. Stitcher is dead. Oh, no they kidding. They scrapped it. Yeah. I thought they were kind of a big deal. Yeah. Well, it was funny because they they uh, they were purchased by a European group. Remember when we talked about that? Because we've been on there. We've, we've been on them since 2008 yeah. or 10 or whenever. I don't know. When did we start this adventure? Uh, no, no, it's their 13. Well, we've been doesn't. we've been on there every, well for a while. But anyway, yeah, oh, that was just a, that you. was a thing. That was a thing. It was a thing. Now, I, I think their website is still up, but I saw that they were uh, had essentially decided to to uh fold they weren't gonna didn't like, you see you like, saw like you saw the same remain, article but nothing new will be updated yeah uh what else well i guess i guess we can remind people that they're listening on discord if you're listening on discord right now thank you very much for listening and uh, you can ask questions you are allowed post your questions in the discord live and if we believe that the boys see them and notice them and believe that they're pertinent then they will well let me know. Did you get a haircut again, or is that just the same way your head is, Jared? Same way my head is. Oh, okay, you didn't get another haircut. Yeah, I got one uh, a few well a few weeks ago, and now it looks like I need one again. I need I just need it evened out. I just got one last weekend. My I I, I was gonna say I noticed you got a haircut. Yeah, I, I've got this uh, a great clips near me, and I love it because my haircut takes about six minutes. Mm. Yeah, we've got one too, and I don't love it because it's stupidly expensive for what I get. Like I yeah, should great. get. What, what do you consider like stupidly a, expensive? Let, let's establish that right now. Over twenty dollars. I should get cut, curl, blow, wash, dry everything. What for the hell that. are you going to get curled? Whatever. That's <laughs> you. Know, that's the thing. You gonna get a perm for, with the three centimeters of hair that you like to have on top of your head? Yeah. For, for well, my barber that I go to, I've been going to him for six years now. I started when he was just one chair in his own building, and now he owns a bigger building that has he essentially bought a, an office building and he turned each office into its own like private little uh, barber Stall. chair room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a really cool design. He's got a pool table and lounge area with a TV and stuff. If you want to come chill before you before or after your haircut, and. I've been going to him for six years, like I mentioned, and he has increased his price one time and it's still a, it's less expensive than many of these other places that are in the modern area. And when a dude sits down to get his haircut, they, they wrap you with the menthol wrap and then they wash your hair. And it's like, I don't need all that stuff. I literally just want my haircut. I can wash my own hair. But there was a lot. <laughs> That's why I really appreciate. It. I go to this place in Salt Lake called Fuzzy Nates. If you're in the area, I highly recommend him. Um, yeah, tell him that I sent you, but he might kick you in the balls. So you know, it's a fifty-fifty. You probably shouldn't there. say balls. 
That's What's another word for balls? Nuts. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to one in the mall that was like, uh, I don't know what the hell, hell it's called, but it was like 35, 40 bucks because it was one of those things where it's like, what? Where they, it's like a, like a basketball haircutting place where it's like you go sit down in bleachers. And oh, like it's it's called oh, like yeah, that, they do all the that, the fades and the pandering. The what is what, it, Zach? Yeah. I'm trying to understand what it is, and you're talking over him. But it, it's it's one of those haircutting places that like does the like the waves and the the designs and the hair and the fades and the like the. Oh, hair and stuff. is that a Gen Z thing or is that has that been a thing for young? Young men, young kids. I, mean, I don't know who gets that. Who, who start? Who started it in the nineties? It was when this, oh. this, all this like hair artistry really started. Oh, I got a funny story for you. Go for it. On barber stuff, there. I, I went to a new barber down closer to where I live now, and to, to try it out and see if it was comparable to my buddy Fuzzy Nate. And while I was there, the phone rang. And somebody on the other end, it was a, a gentleman of color. It was a black dude. And he said to the barber, he's like, hey, you cut black hair? <laughs> and the barber's like, yeah, we cut black hair. Because it's it's a legitimate question. If you've been around anybody that has ethnic type hair, um, Jewish people <laughs> or black women and, or black dudes, then you'll know that there's a specific, you have to do it a specific way. Because if, if they just walk a into a specific great clips, question. Yeah, with with yeah. What, whatever happened with their hair, you know, it's uh, if they would just walk into great clips, it they'll come out and it'll look like they went through a shredder. So it's a legitimate question. I just thought it was funny that while I was sitting in the chair, they somebody called and asked that question, and and the barber was kind of like, "Yeah, absolutely, we do that." And one of the dudes that was sitting there waiting was like, "Huh?" I could tell he'd never been exposed we, to that question cut, before. We cut brown hair, blonde hair, yeah. gray hair. We That's cut all colors of hair. It was like, no, we exactly. only cut blondes and red hair. If, if you're a, a, a freaking uh, a psycho liberal, if you're a liberal arts major uh, with blue hair, we cut that too. <laughs> I went to a Supercuts. Uh, Speaking like, of color, uh, uh, let's go ahead and do on. the yeah. Duracoat we'll Finish Firearm segment of the week. Yeah. I, for one, was enjoying our Barbary discussion. Yeah. All right. What color, what camo should you put on your hog rifle? That is a fantastic question. And if you are from the uh, the great state or the Republic of Texas, you'll understand that Texas is basically the size of a country. And there's a big difference environmentally between East Texas and West Texas. I learned this a long, long time ago. People from Texas don't just say, I'm from Texas. And if they're from West Texas, they make sure that they tell you that they're from West Texas. And you're like, what? Like people from Ohio just say they're from Ohio and people from, they're from Michigan. They're like, well, actually people that are from Michigan, just they hold up their hand and they point. Uh, to tell you where they're That's from. Right. Uh, but yeah, people people from Texas, especially people from West Texas, make sure that you know when you talk to them that they're from West Texas. Am I lying? Am I dying? In West Texas, people are like, hell yeah! Because uh, West Texas people don't want to say, I'm from Texas, and have the, the Yankees assume that they're from Dallas or Houston or something like that. Um, so they, now, they always... also, to be fair, there is a line down the middle of Texas and it runs North and South. Mm. And once you get about 30 minutes West of uh, Dallas, the climate totally changes. So it's like a different, it's like a different state, a different part of the country. Cause it really is like <laughs> from West side to East side is how many miles? Uh, a few hours, uh, 12 hours, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, folk, the, my, my point is, though, and if you look at a map, you'll see that, you know, if you just look at a normal map, how the eastern part of Texas is green and then the western part of Texas is brown. 
So that, that kind of answers the question. If you go to uh, DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com and you click on their camo packs, right? Click on the camo packs and you go to the, the top one, the Cryptech starts with a K, the Cryptech. Uh, you the would cryptic. find, yeah, the Cryptic, Cryptic. Uh, if you, you'd look at that, you would find, well, that they have Highlander, Nomad, Mandrake, Banshee. But my point is, is that depending on where you are, if you're in West Texas, you're probably going to want a camouflage uh, that has more browns in it. And if you're in East Texas, like if you're, if you're hunting, if you're planning on hunting, shooting, killing stuff uh, around Houston, or especially if you're way over uh, close to the Louisiana border, uh, you're, you're still going to have a lot of green there. There's still going to be a lot of green over there by the, uh, by the Louisiana border. You know, your, your Nacogdoches, uh, places like that. Uh, I know it's not Nacogdoches. Just calm down. Don't, don't freaking write me letters. Uh, Tyler. I had a good friend that was from Tyler. You're Tyler. You're from Tyler, Texas. No, I'm from Tyler. Did you not hear me? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that you, know, you say, well, does it really matter? I don't know. Does it matter to you? It matters to some people. Uh, it matters to some people. So, uh, yeah, they, we're talking about Texas rifles today. I'm going to talk about Texas hog-killing rifles. Of course, if you're killing them in the dark, it doesn't matter what color your gun is because they're not going to see it. <laughs> Like, does it matter at all? Yeah, with some people it matters. Well, you can get the Wraith snow as as pattern for it. There you go. Yeah, as long as it's not a mirrored color, then it, and you don't shine your light off of it and it doesn't blind the hogs, then you're fine. Yeah. So there you go. If you go to uh, DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com uh, and you click on the camouflage patterns, camos and designs, uh, you'll see the Cryptek, military camos, uh, hunting camos, traditional camos, all kinds of stuff. So check those guys out at DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com. Yes, indeed. And don't forget to pick yourself up some official student of the gun, slightly darker black. Yes, indeed, slightly darker black. All right, uh, moving on. My show notes say... But I'm supposed to do the mid-roll sponsor plugs right now. I'm, I'm going to do a little Bill Burr. Yeah, my show notes says right here, I'm supposed to talk about Sherry's Berries. What the freak is that? What, what is that? <laughs> I still remember. That's from years, like three, four years ago, uh, Bill Burr talking about Sherry's Berries. Bill Burr is probably the only person who can get away with Crap talking is that his <laughs> Then I'm sure that the like the 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 stiff necked pencil you know the pencil pushing tie wear and sponsor people if they listen would get uptight but then but then they're marketing like ah calm down boss we want him to say our name that's what we want we're paying Bill to say our name a anything else doesn't really matter just. We're paying him to say our name. Okay. But still, he's not being respectful. <laughs> Speaking of being uh, respectful. My favorite one is when he would just do the ad read verbatim, but, but not put any emotion into it. He's like, hello. <laughs> do you suffer from red, dry, itchy skin? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, speaking of high point firearms did you guys enjoy last week's uh the last week's episode you did uh if you didn't well or if you didn't listen yet what are you, oh, for what are you waiting go back and uh, listen to our interview with charles brown known as charlie to his friends yes indeed charles brown uh and he owns a company called MKS Supply, and they are the official distributors for many products uh, in the United States. One of those would be High Point Firearms. So you can check those guys out at high-point.com, high-pointfirearms.com. Juxi, J-U-X-X-I, we just had a conversation about Juxi um, off the air. 
But what do we have new? Is there anything new on Juxing? And it's the the running late bag. I think the latest thing on our Juxy channel is the running late bag, I believe. Or or is it the the Mete? It's the Mete. We talked it's about It's the Mete. Yeah, okay. All right. So we got the running late bag. We got the the C9 or the MC9 Mete. Uh, I was looking at the channel mm-hmm. and I it, the running late bag thumbnail caught my eye. I was like, what is going on in this picture? What is the what is this supposed child to be? child with a balloon and a a person Superman dragging them. with the Yeah, and he's got like a tactical bag on. So that was a good one, Zach. Yeah, good job, Zach. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What can so I say? Check those guys. You're welcome. Yep. And uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So for those of you out there in the listening audience who do not want to get involved with the YouTube and you don't want to get involved with Facebook, uh, that's fine. You can get involved with juxxijuxy.com. You're like, no, they're the same as Google and they're the same as YouTube. No, they're not. They're not the same as YouTube and they're not the same as Google because they they su- are self-supporting, which is a mother lover in the world that we live in today. Uh, you guys know how, uh, what was that parlor got shut down during the, the administ- or the election in fiasco? Yep. Why did parlor get shut down and how did they get shut down? How was an outside source or an outside entity able to go in and shut them down. How are they able to do that, Jerry? Because there's outside influence from the, you have the, the level of the product, but then you have a higher level of everything that you, that take, that you need to have in place to run that product. And so what happened is the people that were in a position to remove access to the hosting did so. Yep. And we talked about this on the show with Charlie last week. It's like, man, we've got to, as an industry, Stop supporting people that don't like us. Stop supporting people that actively attack us and keep our money and keep our funds within the industry. Why would we not support our own community before we look outside of that to figure out what we can fix? First, we must support our own community. Yeah. People say all the time, they're like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how many people consider this, but without the firearms industry defending liberty, the light of liberty that dad talks about, it dims considerably and it might even go out. And without liberty, well, where do you go? No matter what. Yeah. It's, you know, where that, we're the last one. That is, that's, that's the step. That is the step that they've been, they've been trying for decades. Like if you can, if you can eliminate civilian ownership or severely restrict, and you're like, oh, I, I love how, you know, we used to get these Europeans who are like, hey, you shut your mouth because we can own guns. I'm like, you can. Yeah, you're we can to. own guns. Yeah, you're allowed. All right. So, okay, cool. You, are you carrying a gun right now? No, of course not. Oh. And if someone breaks you into can, your house and you shoot them with said gun, what happens to you? Oh, yeah. It's like you're in England. We can own guns in England. Oh, you can? What can you own? We're oh, There's... This, this, this many, we're allowed to own this many kinds of guns and they have to be locked up and the ammunition has to be locked up separately. And we're only allowed to have so much ammunition. And if someone, and we do not have a right to self-defense, you do not have, so if someone breaks into your house and they're threatening to kill your family and you take your single barrel shotgun and shoot them, they will arrest you and throw you in prison. Yes. So don't give me this horse crap about we're allowed to own guns. You're a slave who has a privilege, an expensive privilege. You're a slave with an expensive privilege. And that's what they're trying to do in the United States. They're trying to turn it into an expensive privilege. And if they can do that, we're done. The earth, planet earth is done. Just so you know, you're like, no, man, you can go to go ahead and fill in the blank. Tell me. I had a friend of mine challenge something that I want to talk to you about on uh, the bonus hour. Uh, okay. But he had, he challenged me about my thoughts about personal liberty. 
mm-hmm. and he brought up some interesting points that I want to discuss with you and and see what you have to say. And I'd love to know <laughs> what the audience has to say as well. <laughs> but we'll talk about that on Thursday's bonus hour. There you go. All right. So, uh, yeah, if we don't support each other, you know, if, if we don't, you know, people are like, oh, I, you know, I already have a YouTube thing. I already have a Facebook thing. I don't need Juxy. I don't need another thing. Okay. But don't complain when you don't, when you no longer have any liberty, when the Bill of Rights has been destroyed and gutted. And you're like, well, how'd this happen? I don't know. How did it happen? How did it happen? The First Amendment protects all the rest. I know we always talk about the Second Amendment protecting the other ones, but without the First Amendment, the rest fall. Yeah, there you go. And slaves in other countries don't have either. You're like, yes, they do. They have freedom of speech. No, they don't. Try try freedom of speech in in Europe. Try freedom of speech in in what you would call the the free world in Australia and New Zealand. Try freedom of speech in in a third world country. They'll never see you again. They'll never see you again. Your family will never see you again. So uh, it's a big deal. It's a BF deal. Speaking of freedom of speech, I'm going to give, well, you guys the opportunity to listen a little bit louder right now. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. So, ladies and gentlemen, I got a question for you guys. You go to Brownells and you think, okay, they have ammunition and they have gun parts and they have stocks and they have stock refinishing kits and they have springs and they have scopes and stuff. Did you know they have night vision? No, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. No, they have night vision. They have, and they have many different types of night vision uh, that are in stock. They have thermal optics, and they have uh, they have ANPVS. And the ANPVS fourteen, what does it stand for? It stands for like a blah 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 blah. A N. I want to get it right. Next, don't you have it memorized? No, I don't have it memorized. We've been. I, I have two primary visual system. There you go. We'll go with that one. There you go, ANPVS fourteen. So it says, but uh, the we had the the PVS four when I was active duty the first time. The first time I was active duty, we had the ANPVS four, and we had the ANPVS five. That was portable visual day. search. Army Navy yeah. portable visual search. search. Yep, yeah. Army Navy portable visual search. Yes, we had the, and if you really want to go, if you want to like feel old or if you guys are nom era guys, uh, the PVS two, the PVS two was monstrous. I think it weighed like five or six pounds or something like that. Uh, if you think, if anyone ever says to you, oh, I wish this PVS 14 was more compact, <laughs> show them a picture of the ANPVS two mounted to an m16 in vietnam (laughs) you're like oh yeah that was enormous (laughs) that was just if if you pull one up uh there's a very famous picture of the soldier in olive drab greens and he's got an m16 with a pvs2 night vision device attached to it and this is when you say do what now (laughs) <laughs> and dude, those guys thought they were high speed. The, yeah. In 1967, those guys are like, man, this is crazy. This is like Star Trek technology because they didn't say Star Wars back then. <laughs> this is like Star Trek technology. It's crazy. So that's where we were. 
and and where we are today is you know it's light years ahead it's light years ahead and also the fact that you know the crazy thing is is i would venture to say that the starlight scopes back then probably cost even more than they do today i'll give you guys a great example uh in during the early stages of GWAT, the global war on terror which uh, i was a able to to tour the insight technology factory in new hampshire and insight technology in addition to making flashlights makes uh, thermal imagers and so forth they make high speed stuff they make lasers um, and they have military contracts and i got to in around i guess it was four or five or four or five uh, get my hands on a new handheld thermal imager and it was pretty high speed right and i said and you know we asked the group that i was there with asked and they're like yep they're 25 per 25 hundred no 25,000 per unit and you're like what they had a laser designator right <laughs> and you could call in jdams and stuff with it no it was just a handheld thermal today thanks to that is the one uh benefit that you guys are going to reap from the global war on terror is the fact that that manufacturers poured millions and millions of dollars into new product development so that they could win contracts with the government right you want to win a, a night vision contact tract with the government you want to win a a thermal uh contract with the government you you know what do you want to do well, you got to put millions of dollars. You get investors, and they're like, "Hey, we're we're pitching this new optic to the government, and but it has to meet these features." The government says, "I can weigh no more than this. The battery life has to be blank." You know, yada yada yada. And the development during the twenty years of GWAT that went into that has trickled over, and that's always the way it's been. It's trickled over into the civilian market. I'll give you a great example: the psionics, uh, night vi the the digital night vision, the psionics black model now, Jared, is priced down to three hundred and ninety nine dollars. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. So the the basic model, no fancy stuff, you know, uh, but just a, a a night vision camera. It's a night vision camera with video and still i don't i don't see i don't need all that crap but whatever and that is and it's, that would be it's not, cool for like if you're hog hunting and you wanted to record it that would be very sweet you'd have to have somebody with you yeah obviously well, I, but i mean that would be super i've cool tried that before i've tried that like back when they had the the, the rifle mounted cameras and stuff like that it, it it seems like a good idea until you're trying to work all the all the various moving parts yeah, i know that some people you'd have to have somebody that because i believe with the black you can tie it to the phone so you'd have to have somebody that's a videographer that's there and their responsibility is to your responsibility is to shoot the animal and their responsibility is to make sure it's captured yeah but i don't know who you would take with you to make sure that that happened though the reason i bring this up and the reason that we're talking about this is because the opportunity uh, at least in Texas, to shoot at night, to hunt at night, uh, is has expanded. And as wild hogs uh, expand their dominance over North America, you're like, oh, no, they're not going to. Mm. Jared, remember when we went to do the helicopter hog hunting, we did the briefing, the educational part, and there was uh, approximately, approximately 2 million, they were pushing 2 million hogs in the state of texas well i just yeah. did some research and the number that was about 10 years ago not quite 10 years ago uh the number of hogs that it was it was pushing two million now it's pushing three wow that's people that's a lot it. of pigs people aren't doing it good enough that's a lot of pigs uh and if you if you want to you know just it's not hard go to the internet and look at hog population you can look from the 60s 70s 80s 90s to now 
And we're not stopping it. They're not putting a dent in it. And w- at the time, we, when we went through the, the one class, the instructor, he said, he goes, in order to just keep the population the same, we've got to kill. What, what did he say? It was something crazy. I, had, I used to have it written down. But it was a crazy number, like six out of ten. You had, we'd have to kill like so fast. So we have to kill six of ten to keep the numbers even, to keep them from growing. And they obviously haven't done that. Well, part of the reason they haven't done that is because you have large metropolitan areas in Texas, uh, and 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 suburban area so you've got a, a big let's say you have a a, a a metropolitan area like houston or dallas and of course all of those areas are surrounded by suburban areas with little small bedroom communities you know the only 10 20 30, people or whatever but all of those areas forbid hunting killing whatever within them and as they expand the hogs don't care you understand that, right? The hogs don't care. Like, oh, we can't go over there into those suburbs because, you know, where the golf courses are and stuff like we can't go in there. Yeah, they're going to go in there. And we had a if, – if this doesn't tell you how stupid people are, we had a, a friend of ours who, was run, who did wild game safaris and hunts and stuff like that. And he said a, a municipality in Texas – contracted him because they were having a hog problem in their parks that these really nice public parks and the hogs would come in at night um and or in, at dusk or in the morning or whatever and then the people were scared and they were tearing it up and they're like hey we need you to come in and trap these things one at a time and he's like all right well this is how much it's going to be per trapping um and then they had, he had to sign some kind of a contract that said he wouldn't kill them, that they would be transported somewhere else. <laughs> First of all, that right there is the ultimate in selfishness, uh, selfish hippiness. It's like, well, this, this animal is a problem for us, but we don't want you to kill it. We want you to take it somewhere else and release it so it can be someone else's problem. Like, oh, that's your plan? Uh, so, yeah, you can't kill them. And you have to sign a contract that says that they will be trapped and humanely transported to another area. Well, once it, he said once it got to the point where it's like, all right, it's going to cost you $1,000 per animal for me to do that, they're like, like, what do you mean? Like, well, it's a huge animal. I have to trap it in a big trap. I have to move that big trap into a vehicle. I have to use fuel and vehicle costs to take it somewhere else. Yeah, it's going to cost you $1,000 per animal that I trap. And they're like, oh, we, we didn't know it was going to be that much. And it's like the, the scene in Ghostbusters. I had no idea it would be that much. He's like, that's okay. I'll just go ahead and put it right back. Let's, let's go ahead and put, put the hogs right back in the park. <laughs> All right, I'll pay it. I'll pay it. <laughs> Unmute your microphone, freak. I was just saying that let's put these on a golf course. <laughs> we can just take them right over here to, this, to the St. Regis golf, golf course and let them go. And, uh, but thanks to hogs killing, or not killing, destroying golf courses um, in Texas, they've decided that, you know what? We need to shoot these things. Daytime, nighttime, anytime is the right time to shoot hogs in Texas. And because uh, you can shoot hogs 24 hours a day, day and night in Texas, the opportunities to use night vision are have expanded. And uh, one of the things that we did during the Patriot Fire Team training camp that we held last month, and we're going to hold again in September, uh, is we do a night vision uh, essentially a night vision portion class um, where we go out and we use different types of night vision. We use digital night vision. We use traditional green on green, you know, night vision. 
Uh, we use thermal imagers. We actually did some experimentation with thermal imagers and, and how, whether or not it was possible to mask um, the signature, uh, the thermal signature that humans give off. Uh, it was it was very interesting and, and it inspired a lot of thought. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. There was that's one of the things about uh the the friends that we have, man. Uh when they come to training classes and the students have actually some of the students that we have now have turned into really we have long term friendships with them, which is kind of awesome. But the uh the mind meld that happens when you're in an in immersive experience like this it's fantastic because what inevitably happens is somebody w- with knowledge that nobody else at the camp has will present that knowledge. Like for instance, if there's an engineer there, you know, <laughs> they can say, Hey, what about this? And we're like, Oh yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Like, you know, we're dad and I are experts in a certain thing, but there are other people that are experts in other things. And this class, what makes this different as the immersive experience is not just being immersed in it, but also we we kind of open that up to the students to 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 share the knowledge that they have as well. Now, other classes with like firearms and whatnot, we don't do that as much because it's it's not the right setting. But this being in the immersive experience is, and so it's you get to spend with like minded individuals or spend time with like minded individuals, liberty minded individuals. But you also get that time to to learn and share knowledge with those same people. Yeah. So it's it's a, a good experience. It's 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 a, a multifaceted experience, and we have another opportunity for you guys to come and uh, share with us and to learn and to get educated. Uh, and I was talking to uh, somebody yesterday on the phone, and, and he was talking about how his local community of gun people are all they're all frustrated and they're angry about the way the country is and 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 the you know what's going on and i was like yeah we all are and 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 the thing is is i'm sure some of you are too and we can be we can sit around and be frustrated and complain on facebook or we can get up our butts up off of our couches out of our chairs and go out and do something productive and that's what the PFT training camp is. It's something productive that you can do. Uh, it's better than sitting around complaining on Facebook. Uh, it's, it's better than just being frustrated and talking about how the world's going to hell in a handbasket. It's like, yeah, we know. Uh, we agree with you. But, so what are we going to do? We just going to sit around and, and be frustrated or are we going to do something about it? So, so I, that's my uh, pitch and, and to remind you, that seats are available right now to the PFT training camp, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd uh, in the wilderness, the wilds of Utah. So get in there and get signed up and get your butt here. All right, we need your support. Yes, we do. Go to studentofthegun.com slash culture and support those who support us. Yes, indeed. Support those who support us. Now, we have a list of companies that uh, have accepted the promotional code SOTG, like Defiant Munitions, My Topo, that's MAPS, Crossbreed Holsters, Brownells. Yes, use the promo code SOTG at Brownells. Uh, Frog Lube, use the, uh, the promo code SOTG at Frog Lube. And of course, all of those you can always go to studentofthegun.com slash Defiant slash Frog Lube slash Crossbreed slash Brownells. And let those people know. Those are the people that support us. We need to support them in kind. And we need to make sure that they know uh, that you're paying attention. And uh, a good rule of thumb for you. If you're on an online shopping, on an online store and you're shopping, just plug in the code, the promo code SOTG. And if it works, then they support us. And if it doesn't, then you won't get the discount. So. (laughs) But if you're on a store and you think that they should have that code, then let them know or let us know. It's like, hey, I shop here quite often. If you guys could get a code there, that would be great. We're yeah. happy to do that for you. The purpose of the code is to help you save some ducats on your order. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, through our efforts, we it, it costs us something to get that set up and then continue the relationship. So there's what? always no, a it's free. commission kickback there. But the majority... It, 
we always negotiate the percentages where it's higher for the customer for you it's checking out than it is for us because the codes are they're they're a in, in addition to it's like hey this is a nice thing to have for our audience because it gives you guys um, another benefit you're actually making money for listening to a free podcast so you're welcome for that yeah no kidding no kidding all right it is time for me to be quiet and for zach to talk shop sotg.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun whether you want to expand your brain increase your marksmanship or help keep your family safe all that plus the pimp hand brands that you love shop sotg.com has almost anything that an american patriot would want education enlightenment and entertainment and we're open 24 7 check out shop sotg.com today and see for yourself Yes, indeed you do. And over at ShopSOTG.com, do not forget that right now, if you order uh, one of the two Lifesaver uh, water purifiers, being the Wayfair, which is the little one that you could stick it in your backpack, but will still do, uh, it'll still filter over 1,300 gallons of water. Or you can get the big old jerry can, throw it on the back of your truck, or it, hey, put it on your back if you want. I'm not, I'm not one to judge. Camper? Yeah. yeah. Put it in your camper. And over 5,000 gallons of water, nice, fresh, clean water. Uh, you will also That's per filter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Per filter. Not even per thing. You can replace the filter and then bing up. Yeah, so you can replace the filters. So anyway. once you buy the jerry can, uh, you could basically use it for the next 20 years. Just replace the filters. Yeah. After 5,000 ga- gallons. Yep. And when you do that, you will receive... Uh, a handful of free liquid IV hydration packets in the lemon lime flavor. If you order the Wayfair, right. you will receive 10 free ones. And if you order the Jerry Can, you will receive 20 free ones. Because let's be real. Even if the water <clears throat> is safe to drink and, you know, it won't hurt you, sometimes it doesn't always taste good if it comes out of an old creek. So, and also the the, the threat of, what do we call it again? Hyponatremia. Hyponatremia. Yeah, you've got to have those electrolytes because it's what the body craves. It's the body craves. Yes, yeah, the the water tastes fine. Uh, it, it tastes. It does. I, I don't know. I, it yeah, it tastes like water that came through a filter. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the yeah. Well, and the thing is, if you're drinking a lot of water, as somebody who's been in hot climates, um, and you just yeah, drink, what do you know about that? If you're drinking a lot of water, every, it's eventually you just get sick of drinking plain water. <laughs> well, that as well. Your brain likes flavor. Yeah, you're, you're just like, ugh. I mean, I'm going to do this because I have to. It'll keep me alive. But, um, yeah, it sure would be nice. I mean, that's why they put the, well, they put vitamin C and stuff in them, like in the MREs. The the drink mix has vitamin C in it and so forth. Um, and that is actually, a, that's a fantastic uh, point that you bring up is we often, we used to know things and then we forget. For instance, in Vietnam, I was, I'm reading a book called Guns Up right now, and uh, it, it, it's an experience of a, a U.S. Marine Corps uh, machine gunner in Vietnam, and he talks about how they were issued salt tablets. Why were they, Jared, why do you suppose they were issued salt tablets? Oh, it's kind of like, like a tampon, so when you get shot, you can take it and you can shove it in the hole? No. Is that what? Yeah. So we used to, during the 60s and 70s, we knew, hey, these guys are going to an extremely hot climate. And, uh, and I'm not talking about the, uh, the water purification tablets, the iodine tablets in the little brown bottle. It's just a salt bottle. Dissolves, right? Salt tablets. And they would tell them, drop this into a canteen of water. Kind of like this, but bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And say, drop that into a canteen of water. Like, why? Why? Oh, why? Because they knew in the 60s and 70s, they knew that you needed, these guys were hiking all over a jungle, sweating profusely, and they knew they needed more than just water with iodine tablets in it, right? They knew that. Well, fast forward to when I was active duty, and then they drop us into the desert in 1990. They drop us into the desert and 
say drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water. Where were the salt tablets? Oh, that's old. That's old, outdated Vietnam era thinking. What? No, I'll tell you what happened. And if we've talked about this before, what happened was after Vietnam, the being in the military was not a favored occupation, shall we say. The the government, the Democrats primarily, the scumbags in the media turned being in the military into a pejorative or a bad thing or something you wouldn't want to do. Uh, our military was decimated after Vietnam. It was in terrible shape. It was in a position, I, I have a, a couple of friends, one in particular who was in, who went in in the late 70s. And he said, the U.S. Army was in such a state of disrepair that they had functioning alcoholics as NCOs. And everybody knew they had people that were illiterate, like literally illiterate, couldn't read or write and active duty in the army. And he was an officer and he was just, he was taken aback by this. And, and he was pulled aside and they're, and they're like, look, here's the deal. We don't have enough people to be choosy. We just got to do with what we've got. We got to make do with what we got. Um, and what happened after Vietnam is a lot of guys saw what was going on. They got out. So what happens is all these guys, these guys with experience, like the corpsman, the, the, the corpsman who learned how to treat major traumatic injuries over, you know, over time, medics and corpsmen they, in, in Vietnam, they figured it out, right? Those guys got out. Then we went into a peacetime military for a couple of decades. And all of those hard fought lessons that we, we discovered that we, we paid for in blood, all the guys who knew those lessons, they went away. And the people that replaced them had never been there. And all they had was the three ring binder to tell them the way it was supposed to be. And if you've ever been in the military, whether it's Navy, Marine Corps, Army, whatever, um, you know that there's the way it's supposed to be in the three ring binder, and there's the way it actually is in the real world, in the field. And so the guys with all that real world field experience got out, went away. So how do you go from in Vietnam, they knew that you needed the sodium the electrolytes, they knew you needed that. So they actually issued the troops salt tablets to me in 1990 being dropped into the desert. And they give you four canteens. They're like, fill them with water and drink, 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 drink. Where's the salt tablets? What are you talking about? There's no salt tablets. Here we are now in 2023 saying, hey, if you just make people guzzle water all day long, and don't give them sodium, potassium, and so forth, electrolytes, they could get hyponatremia, and that could kill them. Oh, yeah, oh. And that's the crazy thing, Jared. If I would have been in Vietnam, I wouldn't have gotten the hyponatremia because they would have given me freaking salt tablets to put in my freaking canteens. But in 1990, they'd forgotten all about that. So here we are in 2023, and we have liquid IV hydration packets that you can drop in your backpack, your pouch, your pockets, whatever. And I'm not saying to put one in every single canteen of water. It's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you, though, is that you need it, especially if you're doing a lot of water drinking and very little eating because it's hot. You're like, I'm hot. I don't want to eat. I'm just going to drink water. Yeah, that, that epiphany occurred to me while I was reading that book. It's like, wow, how is it we went from knowing to do this to 20 years later completely forgetting about it? That is a fantastic question. Yep. That's, that's how that happens. So it could be extremely detrimental 
or beneficial, something with such a massive impact on the human body, how does that information get lost? Yeah. Was there supposed to be something there that was like a replacement for the salt tablet or what? I know where they like, what happened? Is there How something did the in Corman the MREs that could be used that way? How do I mean, maybe, maybe they're like, Oh, the, the, the MREs the, have it. So we'll stop, you know, whatever, but yeah, as long as they eat their MREs, they'll have it and they won't have to worry about it. But all right, it's time for a student of the gun homeroom brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. Go to crossbreedholsters.com. Use the promotional code S O T G. Let them know the student of the gun sent you. It's important. Bada, 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 boom. Yes, indeed. And what is what is the homeroom all about? Crossbreed holsters homeroom. What's it all about? Being about the fundamental four and being dangerous on demand. Being dangerous on demand. We got a story from uh, our friends, which I never thought I well ten years ago I wouldn't have thought I would say that. But my buddy Dan. Hey Dan, you paying attention? You listening? Dan's not listening. Somebody tell Danny should be listening. <laughs> Over at Truth About Guns, this is July 24th, 2023, so it's a brand new story. Why is there somebody doing a rap dance in a window in this picture? Is that what that is, a rap dance? Home invader shot by both homeowners when they return fire during burglary attempt. In McDonald County, Missouri, it is the ex- it is in the extreme southwest part of the state, hard on the borders of Oklahoma and Arkansas. It's in Ozark County, populated by people who declare their independence from the state in 1961. In short, they're not people you want to mess with. If only a would-be burglar knew a little bit more about McDonald County before he let himself into a local home last week. Two homeowners came came home at about 9.30 p.m. to find 62-year-old James Garrett skulking around in their Tiff City house. Both were armed when the intruder took a shot at them. That's ballsy. That's that's one way to do it. They returned fire and both hit their target. According to the McDonald County Sheriff, things were well in hand by the time deputies arrived. (laughs) Duh. Arriving deputies made contact with the homeowners who had come home to find a man inside the home. The homeowners entered the house to find a man barricaded in a room. The burglar fired a shot at the homeowners from a handgun. The homeowners, who were both armed with handguns, returned fire, striking the burglar with a gunshot in each thigh. (laughs) Wow. The homeowners were able to then disarm the burglar and hold him until deputies arrived. The wounded burglar was identified as James F. Garrett, 62, rural, rural Seneca. Garrett was transported by ambulance to a Joplin hospital. Neither homeowner was injured by the shot Garrett took at them. But he will be facing charges of burglary, first degree assault, and armed criminal action once he gets out of the hospital. No charges were filed against the homeowner. Yes. So, so that, go. yeah, that took me back to, uh, have, have you guys ever seen the, the, the rules of gunfighting? Yeah, bring a gun. Yeah. First, step one, bring, bring a gun. Yeah. And then step two, bring a friend with a gun. We, we, we often we often forget about that. And how many times have we talked, Jared, about uh, how our our friends and peers and family members use us as the security guard? Yeah. Like, like, well, you carry a well, gun. You got a gun. Well, yeah, why so, don't you? So I don't have to. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. I get to be the security guard for the group. Why do I have to be the security guard for the group? They're like, oh, well, you're you're carrying, right? So I can we I can drink and I can you know do this is because you're carrying. It's like that's not right. Maybe I don't want to be the designated security guard all the time, right? Maybe I want to just sit in the back and plug my ears. <laughs> Maybe I want to step behind the group and do this. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do that if your friends are all armed. If your friends are armed, you you can you can step back and go. This is going to be loud. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the the main rule is is to be dangerous on demand, 
right? Lethal, sharp, bright medical. Uh, you should be dangerous on demand, but it's not enough or it shouldn't be enough. You shouldn't be satisfied to just be you. Uh, and we've talked about this before. Dads, husbands, you're like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the guardian. I get that. And I'm, I'm happy for you. And I'm, I'm proud. So if you're with your wife and your kids, you're the guardian, but are you always there? Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, what do, what do I mean? What do I mean? Are you always there? Are you there when, when the wife takes the kids to school or to the shopping or to the whatever? Do you ever leave the house and go to work? Do you ever go on trips? Well, you know, well, yeah, of course. Okay. So who's the guardian then? And if you've convinced the wife that you are the guardian, you're the gun carrier. So therefore she doesn't need to do it. Uh, what happens when you're not there? Yeah, no kidding. Good question. So um, bring a gun, bring a friend with a gun, and you shouldn't be the only one. You shouldn't be the, the designated security guard for your family, for the group, for whatever. Uh, all responsible adults in your house need to know how to own, carry, operate firearms responsibly. Um, if they're not a responsible adult and they're invalid, okay, great. But the fact is, is most people aren't invalid. Most people are just lazy. Most people are just willing to let somebody else carry the water for them. What, what does Scott say? We farm out or we, we, we uh, is it farm yeah, out? We subcontract violence. We subcontract violence, yeah. I think it was Carl. Yeah. I really Carl. liked that. I actually, we like to, I we like to that in a subcontract violence out yeah. to other people. It's like. We, I need someone to do violence on my behalf because I'm not able to do it or willing to do it myself. So, yeah. So if, if, it's, if it's time to subcontract violence, <laughs> yeah, bring a friend, bring a, uh, bring a gun, bring a friend with a gun. Uh, those are the basic rules of gunfighting. Uh, and if you're in McDonald County, Missouri, don't break into people's houses. There's that. There's that. All right. The main topic of the day. So, uh, and I was, I was talking to our buddy Brian yesterday on the phone, and I was telling him a little bit about the, the article that I just wrote about, is there a perfect Texas hog hunting rifle? Now, the, you, you've got to understand that the parameters around that question are a bit broad. You say, well, yeah, I've got a, I got an OT6 with a 10 power scope. And that is the perfect hog hunting rifle. Cool. That's the perfect hog hunting rifle if you're going to sit in a blind and you're going to take and you're going to shoot one hog. Right? Well, why would I want to shoot more than one? Here's the deal. Uh, hog hunting is depredation hunting. Now, there are places, I understand this, there are places you can go in Texas that have eight-foot-tall fences that are buried three feet into the ground, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, you can get yourself a trophy boar, right? You go and they put you in a blind and, uh, and you sit there and you wait and, and the perfect trophy boar eventually walks out and you whack it. And then you get pictures and do all that and, and then you're done. You go back to the lodge, drink beer, you know, eat snacks, whatever. But if we're going to deal with the actual feral hog problem in Texas, very rare. Well, it's, it, I guess in my, it's about a 50, 50 big boars will, they'll operate as lone wolves kind of, you know, you'll have your big boars that'll roam around by themselves. But if you're in the field, in the woods of, of Texas, the chances of you running into a single animal versus the chances of you running into a sounder of 10, 20, 30 hogs are about 50-50. Uh, and depending on what you're doing, if you're, if you're actually flying or if you're, if you're stalking in a vehicle, you're probably more likely to run into a big group, a herd or sounder of feral pigs than you are a single individual. And when it comes to depredation hunting to like, it's like, all right, I got a quick question for you guys. If you went into your basement and, and you discovered there were a dozen mice 
in your basement? Would you take the time to sort out and figure out which one was the largest, the trophy mouse and kill it and then be satisfied and say, okay, I killed the biggest mouse. I killed the, the boar, the buck. I, I killed that one. And now let the rest go. No, no I'll learn. No. If you went into your basement or, or your whatever and found that there was a dozen mice, you'd be like, screw this. I don't want mice in my house. I'm going to kill all of them, right? They all need to die. That's there's their, their pests, their rodents, their varmints. They all need to die. When you encounter a group of hogs in Texas and you're you know, now, I know somebody's saying, I went to a ranch and you had to pay $500 per animal to shoot a hog. And I was like, I'm not talking about that. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the pay to play. You know, you get to shoot one animal and then the next animal is another $180 or $200 or $500. Whatever. Not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all over the, the Republic of Texas. They're, Push it. There's at least 2 million pushing 3 million feral hogs. And we're not going to get a handle on those, taking them one at a time. Taking, I shoot one hog, high five, we move on. No. No. You, you get a handle on it by killing as many as you see. Like when we, when we pop up and if we run into a group of 20, we're going to put bullets into as many of them as we can, as fast as we can. And what do you get, Jared? 30 seconds? It depends, yeah. About yeah. 30 seconds, that would be a good average. From the time you press off the first shot to the time they're all phew, in the winds, it might be 30 seconds. Yeah. And that might even be pushing it. Some guys like Bill would be like, oh, 30 seconds is way too long. It's more like 10. Um. So when I say, when you say my OT-6 with a 10 power scope is the best rifle, it might be the best rifle for you sitting in a blind, going to pick off one single hog, and then the rest are going to run away. But if you're, gonna, if you're trying to put down as many as you can, you need a self-loading rifle. You need a rifle that you can control under recoil and get back onto target fast or maybe not even come off target. Uh, it, it needs to have a, a, you know, a box mag that holds plenty of bullets, right? And when it comes to Texas, you know, my, my venture here or my desire was to come up with one gun that could be a daytime gun and a nighttime gun. See, a lot of guys out there, they're like, oh, well, yeah, I've got a, you know, I've got a day gun. It's got this blah, blah, blah scope on it, blah, 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 blah. And then I've got a night gun and it has this scope on it and da, 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 da. I've got a, I bought a, a thermal scope with a thing or I bought a, a dedicated night vision scope with the red reticle and the green and stuff like that. So I have a day rifle and then I have a night rifle. Okay. And that's cool. I mean, you can do that if you've got the cash and, and you want to, you know, do the outlay of a couple of different rifles, you know, go crazy. Or how about you? You have a uh, an air rifle. Do you have a, a land, air, and sea rifle? Do you have a seal, sea, air, and land rifle? Right. Like, because mm, if you're going to hunt from a helicopter, the platform, the moving platform of a helicopter, your ought six bolt gun with a 10 power scope is not going, it's going to handicap you. Jared, what, did, what was one of the first things we learned about aerial gunnery is we don't use what? Um, Magnified optics. Oh, okay. I was like, there's the first thing I learned about aerial gunnery was you aim in a completely different position as you yeah. would if you were on the ground. Yeah. Well, because you're even if the even if the aircraft is if they if the pilot brings it into a hover, you're still moving. Oh yeah, there's you're on a movie. You're you're in a machine, all right, and that machine is moving. Uh, trying to 
get a bead on an animal with a, a high of the magnified optic from a helicopter is I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's extremely difficult. Uh, it's going to, it's going to handicap you. It's going to handicap you. Oh, um, so in a bolt gun, it's not going to cut it. It's just not going to cut it, man. Oh, uh, so perfect hog hunting rifle. This is what I came up with. Okay. A, an AR 15 platform gun with an EOTech holographic weapon sight optic on it. Right. But the, it, the, it has to have the night vision button on it. Yeah. And, and if you go to EOTech.com, uh, you can look and they've got certain ones and it'll tell you whether or not it has night vision capability. So in the daytime, you go out with your rifle, you zero it. I just did the other day. I put a new EOTech on my Colt rifle and I zeroed it. I did a three shot BZO. First shot was four inches low right. And then I went, you know, I raised it up and left. Next shot was about one inch, one and a half inches low right. And then I did the next one. I went up, boom, in the black dot, two to confirm, three shot BZO, boom. Bob's your uncle, good to go. Once the, once the reticle on the EOTech is zeroed, if you want to put a magnifier behind it, they sell the, uh, the three power magnifiers. I actually sell five power magnifier, which is probably, I don't know if I need that or whatever, but uh, three power magnifier, right? So if you want it, you want to get preci- precise. You say, well, I want to be able to shoot a hog at a thousand yards. I don't know where you're shooting them. Uh, in East Texas, you're not getting a thousand yard shot on anything. In Northeast Texas, around the uh, the Red River up by Oklahoma, you're not getting a thousand yard shot on anything because you can't see a thousand yards. The longest the longest shot you're probably going to get is going to be like 150 because um, it's thick. It's woods. Uh, I, I think the longest shot I ever took on a hog was right around 200 meters, and that's because it was by a dirt road, and we were following it. We were tracking a group down a dirt road, and we were able to – it was like a long stretch on a, on a – it was a ranch road. Um, but, uh, yeah, super long sniper shots on hogs are pretty rare. I'm not saying it's not it's impossible, you know, but uh, the fact is most of your shots are probably going to be within 200 yards, and most of the, and the majority are going to be within 100 yards. And uh, if zero, the, the, the aiming dot, the little, little dot in the circle in the dot reticle on an EOTech is a true one MOA. Right. Oh, so you've got that. You put the magnifier behind it, put it up. You have three times magnifier. Now you can make a more precise shot. You don't have to. Now, the funny thing is the magnifiers have adjustments on them. They have uh, north, south, east, west (laughs) elevation and windage adjustments. That's just so that you can adjust it so that the reticle is perceived to be in the center. The magnifier doesn't change the impact. All it does is help you see better. Okay. It doesn't change the impact of the of the round. Once you've got your EOTech zeroed, it's it. You don't mess with it. Just leave it alone. You say, okay, that's great for daytime. All right. Uh, and the cool thing about the EOTech magnifiers is they have a little throw lever on them. So they're quick on, quick off. You don't need any tools. Just pull that off. And now you get your ANPVS 14 and you're going to need to get a uh, a let a rail a mount get a mount a same what they call the same plane mount right and it has a it has a thumb screw on it so you can you don't need any tools and boom you put that right in behind the eotech turn the eotech on push the nv button it goes to night vision setting turn your uh your pvs 14 on now you have a night gun Aiming point is still the same. Uh, it's, it's still point of aim, point of impact. Make sure you have your uh, microphone on if you're going to talk to me, Jared. It's on. I was just thinking okay. about what you were saying. Yeah. So you could take the same rifle, go out in the daytime, and, and do your business, right? Then the sun goes down, 
take the magnifier off or maybe you don't even have the magnifier on maybe you're just using the straight straight up thing slap the pvs 14 on hit the night vision button turn it on boom now you got night vision now you have a night rifle and you're like yeah but i can't i don't have my magnifier so i can't take long shots at night stop we don't take long shots at night oh uh, number one at night, it's even more critical or it's more difficult or more uh, to get solid ID on your target at night. Obviously, you have to know what you're shooting. That's a, the problem with thermals is thermals, you can see the images way, way, way off in the distance. You can see the white hot, but that white hot could be a lot of things off in the distance. That white hot could be jackrabbits. That white hot could be hogs. That white hot could be freaking cattle a thousand yards away. Those little white dots that are moving around in your thermal uh, that are 700 yards away, you think those are hogs, and then you get closer, and you're like, oh, those aren't hogs. Those, that's cattle. Yeah, aren't you glad you didn't put bullets into those things? Because that's an expensive mistake. You shoot someone's steer, not only are you going to have a conversation with the local deputy sheriff, but you're going to be writing a large check. Yeah, you, you think $500 to kill a hog is expensive? Go ahead and shoot someone's steer negligently. That's going to be a little bit, that's going to be a little bit more pricey. Yeah. Uh, besides the fact that you're going to look and feel like an idiot, uh, you may have charges brought up against you. So you can't just like, oh, I see. And, you know, you get excited. I've been out at, a lot of times out with thermals, and the guy with the thermal picks up the white, you know, the, the white hot. And they're like, oh, I see him. I see. Him. Well, you stalk and you stalk and you stalk and you get up and you're like, oh. or or you stalk and you stalk and you realize it was a jackrabbit, not a hog, because it's kind of hard to judge distance through thermal. Like what? Yeah, <laughs> that's another thing. Is um, your ability to estimate distance in the daytime? And your ability to estimate range or distance in the nighttime are not the same, brothers and sisters. They are not the same. Looking through a thermal and, and spotting that white hot, you're like, oh, it's probably, I have no idea. It could be 100. It could be a jackrabbit at 100, or it could be a hog at 300, or it could be a, a steer at 500. We don't know. So, I mean, it's pitch blackout. We're looking through thermal or we're looking through, you know, and that's the thing. It's why it's always actually a good balancing act to have. If you've got somebody with thermal uh, to spot the white hot and then to have somebody with true night vision, uh, because the clarity you get from good night vision from gen, you know, gen two plus gen three, uh, gen three plus, that's about as much as you're going to get as a civilian. You're not going to get any higher than that. Um, is let me tell you what. When I was using night vision, it was Gen One. It was fuzzy. You couldn't look through it very long. You'd get a headache. Um, when I put on my first P, when I picked up a PVS 14 for the first time during GWAT, and I looked through it, and I was like, "Holy crap! The technology has improved dramatically." It wasn't GWAT. It was like '99 or something like that. But um, I was like, wow, technology has improved tremendously. And it has. So, and this is when people say, yeah, you're an idiot. You cannot kill a hog or you shouldn't even try to kill a hog with a 5.56. True or false, Jared? False. Why would you say that's false? Because we've done it. Yeah. Oh, sure. You did like a little tiny baby pig you kill with a two five five six, but not a, a full grown adult yeah. like sour boar. Adult pig. If you, you can get, kill an adult boar with a five five six? Yeah, if you're using quality ammunition. Yeah. Jared, do you how far away from me were you? Do you remember when when Shane said, I think it's a kill deer, and I turned the spotlight on and it was a freaking 250 pound sow heading straight for me. Yeah. You remember how far away from me you were when that happened? I was relatively close. Yeah. And it was about what, 10 yards from me when it stopped? Yeah. Yeah. 
you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> it was a pucker factor. Yeah. So I had my rifle loaded with Black Hills Mark 262, 77 grain OTM match bullets. You're like, I don't need match ammo. Calm down. The reason it's called OTM is to get around the Hague Accords and the, and the Geneva Convention forbidding the use of, of hollow point ammunition, blah, 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 blah. It's for ballistic stabiliz- It's for ballistic stabilization. You can say whatever you want. When it hits flesh, it does tremendous things. So we, we had jumped a sounder of feral hogs. This is a night in Texas. We're out in a gator type apparatus, you know, mule, gator, whatever. Um, came up on a group of hogs unexpectedly, bailed out, mad minute, you know, 15, 30 seconds of whack, 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 right? And, and and we put, what, four or five animals on the ground. The rest of them scattered. So we get out. We're walking around. We're looking like, okay, which ones are wounded? Which ones are dead? And taking a deep breath and calming down. And I had, I had my rifle. And at the time, I didn't have night vision. I was the jerk that didn't have night vision. Uh, I, was, I had a, a rifle. I had, it was suppressed. I had the suppressed rifle. I did have a suppressor, so I wasn't that much of a jerk. Uh, unlike somebody who has a short barrel 308 with no suppressor, I'm not going to say who that was. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had my Colt rifle with an EOTech and a Surefire light mounted on it, and uh, so we we were doing the the after action, calm down, right? And I walked over. And I was standing by the edge of where we were, and I heard something, and I, I whispered. I was like, hey, I hear something. And my buddy says, oh, it's probably just a kill deer. And I, mm, I don't know. So I raise up my rifle, turn, hit the surefire light, and here comes a freaking sow, a full-grown adult sow, feral, coming straight for me. So I coming flicked right off the... I flicked off the switch, shouldered it, and wacko, wham. And I caught her right behind the snout in the shoulder, and she dropped like a stone 10 yards from me. She was about 250 pounds or so. Like, ah, that's not that big. Okay, sure. Yeah, 250-pound hog with a a gopher round with a prairie dog cartridge. It's like the the 77 grain, the Mark 262 is not a prairie dog cartridge. It's not a gopher around. Um, it does its job. It does the job. And you say, well, I can't afford that. Well, then uh, you can't afford night vision either. So don't worry, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> if you're just going to shoot cardboard and, and paper and maybe even just, you know, pling steel or whatever, right? Just buy the 55 grain full metal jacket stuff and have fun when it's time to shoot stuff that's made out of flesh, uh, spend the money and get the good ammo. Uh, it, there is a difference between the good ammo and the cheap ammo. Uh, there's a definite difference. And when we, when we killed, we killed a lot of hogs and coyotes out of helicopter in Texas for over through a period of three days. And we did it all with five, five, six. We had five, we had, AR-15 rifles with EOTechs, and the EOTech reticle from the moving platform of a helicopter is a tremendous device. It, it helps you tremendously because that, as long as you can, you know, when they're running, if you could get them, what is it, what is uh, Brian, is it Brian with tactical response that calls it the ring of death or the halo of death? Can't remember who it is. Yeah. But he talks about using the, the ring of death. And he says, as long as you can get them in the ring, get it in the ring. And that's pretty much what, you know, the way it is with that. If you can get that moving animal in the ring, but if they're moving, if you're chasing them down, and this is, this is probably a story for another day, but well, I'll, I'll tell you real quick. Uh, one of the things you have to learn when you're doing aerial gunnery is that you in the air are moving faster than the target on the ground. So let's say a hog is running full out, trying to get away from you. 
and you're running it down with the helicopter. The helicopter is going faster than the hog is. And if you lead, now the normal, your brain has taught you if you're in a blind or if you're standing on the edge of a field and a deer takes off, that you can put the sit crosshair in front of its nose, press the trigger, and the bullet will go into the boiler room and put it down, right? That's what you've been taught. If you lead an animal from a helicopter, you're going to shoot way in front of it. Because you're going faster than the animal is. The helicopter's going faster than the animal. You have to change up your brain and you have to actually lag the target. You have to shoot perceptibly in your, in your vision. You're, you're shooting behind the target, which is crazy. You're like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Ah. But the great thing about the EOTech. The reticle, the, the, the circle and the dot is it has the north, south, east, west tick marks. And so what you do is you put the tick mark, the appropriate tick mark of the circle behind it, behind the animal on its butt and press the trigger and the bullets go where they're supposed to go. It's it's crazy. It's voodoo. Uh, it's non-intuitive. It's not what you've ever been taught. You know, you always like of what you do. On yeah. That. You're like, no, I lead it. I lead it. You have to lead it. It's like, if it's running, you lead it, N not in a helicopter. If you're running it down in a helicopter, you're going faster than the animal is. And if you lead it, you're going to shoot way out in front of it. So once we learn to do that, once we figured it out, you get it in your brain, you're like, okay. And you use that EOTech reticle and it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. And then, of course, you have other situations where, like the you know the the pilot will turn or hover or move it around or whatever, and you gotta you you really gotta have your crap together, um, yeah, to safely and to do effectively and safely shoot out of an aerial platform like that. Um, you you can't be just some geek off the street. You got to be handy with the steel, if you know what I mean. So there's that. So, in my opinion, my uh, my professional opinion, uh, if you wanted to set up a rifle that could be used day or night, you just change it over real quick. Um, what you would do is you would set up a, an AR-15 platform, 5.56. Five, you put yourself an EOTech reticle on it, zero that. And then for daytime distance stuff, if you wanted to, uh, you can either just shoot the straight up reticle itself or you can put a magnifier behind it and then for nighttime once the sun goes down in texas and you're going to shoot hogs in the dark you just replace that with a pvs 14 and boom now you got a night gun and if you really want to go crazy if you if you've got time and money and you want to learn a new skill you mount an infrared laser you mount an ir laser on your gun, and then you put the PVS-14 on a head rig, and you kill hogs in the dark with IR laser, which is awesome. Because <laughs> they don't, and if you use a suppressor, it's even better because they don't know which direction to run away to. They hear the noise, and what they'll do is they'll like freak, and then they'll like run in a circle because they're not sure which direction to run away. Um, and you hear the, Jerry, remember, remember hearing the bullets going whack, whack. People are like, I don't know if I got a hit. I'm not sure if I hit him. Like, I know I did because I heard the bullet whack it. Yep. Uh, I heard the bullet impact whack. Yes, indeed. I heard the bullet whack. So, um, that's that's why Texas is the land of opportunity when it comes to honing your skills. Um, if you're bored with sitting in blinds over feeders, waiting for stuff to show up, go to Texas. Go to, get with some get with the Texas you know get uh, ranchers or whatever or outfitters. There's outfitters that uh, when we when we killed hogs from a helicopter, the the pilot had contracts with ranchers, with farmers and ranchers. And he would go, he would contact them like, here, this is what I do. Do you have a wild hog problem? And they're like, mm, are we in South Texas? Yes. 
we have a wild hog problem. It's like, okay, do you want me to help you with that problem? And they're like, yes. It's like, okay, I'm going to come out with, with maniacs in fucking, oops, <laughs> in a helicopter. And uh, we're going to, we're going to exterminate some of those hogs for you. So there you go. Uh, that's, that should be good for now. So uh, coming up this week, uh, Student of the Gun University podcast. Yes, indeed. Student of the Gun University podcast. It comes out on Thursdays. It is a single topic, short form, easy to digest. And uh, this week's is, hey, every once in a while, you might need to want to take your guns apart and clean them. What? <laughs> Isn't there an iPhone app to clean my gun? No. There's no iPhone app to clean your gun. Every once in a while, you might want to bust out the frog lube, bust out the frog lube uh, solvent, bust out the frog lube lube. The extreme is extreme. <laughs> it's extreme. Bust it out. Get your, your all-purpose brush, some, some patches, maybe a cleaning rod, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. But until then, thank you very much for being here. I truly appreciate it. Make sure that you support those who support us. It does make a difference. It, it makes a difference in two ways. If you don't support those who support us, it makes a, it, we have a negative impact. If you do support those who support us, we have a positive impact. So you can either have a negative impact on our show or you can have a positive impact on our show. It's up to you. How's that sound? Boys, do we have any questions? Uh, I think everyone is informed for today. All right. Well, if everybody's, if everyone's uh, tracking five by five, this is what I'm going to tell you. Uh, go join the grad program, you freaks. We've got a show tomorrow, a bonus hour tomorrow. We've got a bonus hour on Friday. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about Portland Portlandia. Yes, Portlandia. We're going to talk about peacocking. And we're going to talk about uh, who is the XO? I don't know. That's coming up tomorrow on a bonus hour. Go to getsotg.com. That's get, G-E-T, S-O-T-G.com. Sign up and become a member of the grad program. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you could finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.